ghost town, a deadly no-go zone, ruled by the ugly Americans. Don't kill someone and they go come back. No more for me. Murderers and hitmen, led by a boss who rules with an iron fist. They want to shoot us, they must shoot. Uncompromising, brutal, savage. He was lying here, and he was chopped into pieces. Even the police fear for their lives. Straight through, straight through, straight through. As they hunt for weapons, drugs, and murderers. Playa iso! Playa iso! Almost everyone in Ghost Town is violent, addicted to drugs, and willing to do anything to experience the next kick, no matter what the price. It's like this guy took something from me. Prostitution, crystal meth, and the daily threat of a new gang war. Welcome to Ghost Town, one of the toughest places in the world. Cape Town, South Africa, the country's oldest city. Africa's southernmost tip is home to almost four million people. Prosperity prevails on one side of the town. Big business, flashy cars, and last but not least, a fabulous lifestyle. But just a few miles away from the center of downtown, it's like a whole other world. Mitchell's Plain Township, home to 300,000 people. According to official stats, almost 1,600 physical attacks take place here every year. 200 sexual assaults, 5,000 drug-related offenses, and 140 murders. However, no one is certain of the unofficial figures. These facts alone make it sound pretty dangerous. However, even in Mitchell's Plain, there is one block that no one dares to enter. Ghost Town, territory belonging to the ugly American street gang. No police or ambulances will help you here. It's one of the toughest and most dangerous neighborhoods in the world, a definite no-go zone. All of Cape Town's slums are located within a specific area, a place known as Cape Flats. Mitchell's Plain is the largest of these slums, and right at the heart of it, you will find ghost town a kingdom belonging to one man he writes the laws here and he decides who lives and who dies Kaldi Mola Madat nicknamed Dimes boss of the ugly Americans gang he's been ruling over ghost town for the past 37 years and he will do anything to defend his territory we get rid of any enemy who enters our area. Definitely. Without a doubt, 50% chance he'll die. 50% chance he'll wind up in hospital. It will always be one of those two options. According to estimates, Cape Town is home to over 100 gangs, and nearly all of them have their own patch. The result? The borders between these patches end up turning into battlegrounds. According to official figures alone, South Africa records 57 murders a day. Most of these are committed in the area around Ghost Town. Hello. Hey, Hello. everything okay with you guys? Bapolia. Yeah, yeah, see ya. Hello. <laughs> You can die here within the blink of an eye without a single soul noticing. Everyone knows that. That's why this area is known as Ghost Town. Dimes Gang, the Ugly Americans, is a splinter group of the main gang, the Americans, which is the largest in Cape Town. And its members are among the toughest around. On the corner of Marydale Monsoon Avenue, the headquarters, also known as the White House. 
located right on the western border of Ghost Town. Bullets, Molotov cocktails, bombings. The center of this no-go zone has survived every attack made on it to date. The gang use this as their base for defending their turf, planning holdups, murders, and running their core business, drugs. The members are ready and waiting for their next briefing with the boss, Dimes. We do everything in our headquarters. We punish people, make trades, and lead negotiations. And it's where we sell our drugs, too. We meet there on a regular basis to plan everything in detail. Even small fry are permitted to hang out in front of the building. However, the White House itself is reserved exclusively for a tight-knit group of the toughest members. From here, the gang floods not only the no-go zone with drugs, but also the whole of Cape Town, too. Their main product is the extremely aggressive stimulant, crystal meth, and Mandrax, to help users come back down again afterwards. A briefing in the headquarters. Dimes summons his most loyal henchman to a meeting once a week, and as always, expects nothing less than blind obedience. <laughs> Sitting opposite the boss, Dimes, is his right-hand man, Jan May, nicknamed Boozy. His rank, general. His specialty, knives. And in the middle of the table, the killing machine, Andre Gideon. Nickname, Anas, the weapons expert, no less. Even Ghost Town has its own rules, though they lie outside the law. And no gang member is safe from them. Any violation quickly results in death. <laughs> Mass murderer Anis is accusing the gang member of stealing a cell phone. A typical crime committed by drug users. The verdict? Guilty. What follows is the ugly American's usual forms of punishment, from a beating or torture to execution. Unregistered firearms. There are five million such weapons throughout the whole of South Africa. On average, 10% of the population own one. This rises to almost 100% in the no-go zone. The police attempt to fight back with machine guns and pump guns. The slums are once again transformed into a battlefield. Pistols. Here you'll find pistols. They're all over the place. Our streets are full of them. 12 o'clock in Ghost Town. Time for a patrol through the no-go zone. Knife Master Boozy and Killing Machine Anis, both cold, hard killers, lead the group. They use drugs and the power of weapons to defend their patch, right down to the death. Boozy has particularly strong memories of one of his murders. He was laying here, and he was chopped into pieces. When the uh, warrant officer came, and he says he's 17 years in duty in the police force, and he never sees something like that. So they put, put him 
put him into a bag and take him. Boozy hacks his victim with a knife. He is loyal to the core. And he takes fewer drugs than the rest. And maybe that's why he is one of gang leader Dime's closest and most trusted associates. Anas, on the other hand, loves his semi-automatic pistol. He embodies the younger generation of killers. A lot means a lot, be it drugs or bullets. The patrol unit are making their way to the railway tracks, the outermost limit of the no-go zone. Ghost town ends here, and enemy territory begins. I show you what I make of you, and you have a gun, I have got a mesh, a knife in my hand. I, I win the fight. If you believe in the thing you if say, I'm, if I'm, I'm like trash. this to him, Nothing. I, I, he, what? That, that is with somebody else, not with me. <laughs> that is the real yeah. one somebody else. That one is step one of us. And and you dead. The tracks, a line that no one should cross if they want to live to see another day. Two days ago, Anas almost lost his life at this exact spot. Another gang, the Dixie Boys, were out to kill him. That's It's my gang. That's right. That's right. Americans. Yes, Americans. That's right. It's the enemy. Anas is planning to hit back soon. And there's no one he fears less than the police. No cop would dare to come here. Until now, that is. A new special unit was recently introduced in an attempt to bring the situation under control, the anti-gang unit. 95 team members are now investigating the toughest gangs, working with undercover cops and informers, and slowly but surely, they are getting results. The police's operating base is just 10 kilometers northeast of Ghost Town, as the crow flies. An assignment meeting. The boss, Major General Andre Lincoln, is putting pressure on his team. There have been far too many deaths over the past few days. A team made up of specially trained police officers and soldiers are supposed to put a stop to this. The fact that over this weekend, um, just in Gang-related murders, there have been 15, and there have been 10 attempted murders. This is totally unacceptable. It is unacceptable to this unit. Not At the top of the most wanted list, a member of the Americans gang. The gang that owns the ghost town territory, wanted for a brutal murder. Captain Arzia Gyefta will lead the assignment. Her goal, to head straight into Cape Flats and follow the tip-offs provided by several informants. She heads to the first address. Our boss, our general, always laugh and say there's no such thing as a no-go area for policemen. We are the gang unit. We are meant to go to those places where no one else wants to go to. But generally in the police, there aren't places where the policeman will tell you that is a no-go area because that is why we employed to go and address the no-go area where the normal citizen can't go. The teams in the response vehicles are applying special tactics. They split up just before they reach their destination. Hey guys, close to target. Please just keep it tight. Blocking off any nearby escape routes. That's when the raid begins. No one is permitted to leave the area. The first potential criminals are willing to cooperate, but the house is full of nooks and crannies. Nobody knows if anyone is still hiding in there. At first glance, the assignment appears to have failed, or a sham. The weapons turn out to be toy guns. 
All the police find is a sword. Weet hoe dat Maar wat ga je me omak? Niet het al die ding al. Om wat mee te maken? Om niks te maken. Is mis mij ding. Nee, man, ik vraag ons niet te vragen, man. Nevertheless, a state of red alert still prevails, not least due to the countless fighting dogs owned by the spectators, ready to pounce on command at any time. Most houses we get to, it's either massive dogs like that or pit bulls, but it's always a very big dog and a vicious and aggressive dog. And the dogs are, are not tolerant of the police, let me put it that way. The first search has come to an end. The anti-gang unit has collected three suspects, and perhaps they'll break one more too. During questioning, down at the station. Perhaps their next lead will take them to the murderous member of the Americans gang. The captain is still hoping for success. The shift is over when the job is done. And there are days where the job isn't done for 16 or 17 hours later. So this must be something that you love to do because otherwise you're going to work yourself to death. The next raid is underway, and the cops are closing further in on gang leader Dimes. Meanwhile, he is personally checking the situation in his no-go zone, alone, without any bodyguards. Not a problem for Dimes. As long as the people of Ghost Town stick to Dimes' rules, they will be under his protection. But if they break them, they will be punished. Everyone here is willing to protect him. Dimes' career began when he was young. He well and truly wiped out his predecessors, the gang known as the Nice Times, using a cleaver. Many have tried to take his place. Dimes has almost lost his life several times. This is exactly where they attacked me. I played dead, put my arm over my head. They wanted to shoot me in the head, but only managed to get my hand. They thought I was dead, took my weapon and ran off. And I'm still alive. That's just one of 17 murder attempts. Dimes survived them all. Maybe that's why people look up to him particularly the youngest inhabitants of the no-go zone, and why they want to be part of everything that Dimes has created. Around 60 henchmen now work for him, and the number is growing all the time. Uh, we don't worry about who's driving around here. If they want to suit us, they must suit. Because by we, we stand, in God we trust. I we must. We stand to... If they dare to come here, we just shoot back. We are not scared. By we, he means his obedient lackeys. Almost all of them are junkies. Drugs are what fuel the no-go zone. The worst drug of them all, Tuk, also known as crystal meth. It has been spreading through the whole country from Cape Flats since the year 2000. Addiction counselors reckon that one in five young people, alone in and around Cape Town, now takes crystal meth. And then there's Mandrax, a synthetic drug normally smoked through the neck of a bottle. It acts as a downer following the high of crystal meth. No other country in the world consumes as much Mandrax. The drugs sold in Ghost Town don't take long to leave the borders of the no-go zone to various places around Cape Town. Nikita lives in the northwest of the city along with her son and her boyfriend. She's a prostitute and a drug addict. She takes Mandrax and crystal meth on a daily basis. 
family time on Sunday afternoon. Nikita earned a lot last night, enough to pay for the electricity and buy some food. Her wish is for her son to have all the opportunities that she never had. Like my daddy always wanted, to be, wanted me to be a lawyer, my mother wanted me to be a teacher. I said you become a teacher and all that, and it didn't work out. He must decide one day what does he want to be. What do you want to be, Jada? Yeah. IP specialist. Thank you both. Nikita's path to prostitution started when she was young. Friends first introduced her to drugs. Not long later, she turned to crime to pay for more drugs. And after that, full-blown addiction. The last resort, sex in exchange for money. Nikita has already used the leftovers from last night's earnings to pay for more crystal meth. <coughs> Joined by her best friends of the moment, prostitute Dihan and her guardians Domas and Boiki, the daily ritual gets underway. Apart from Nikita, all three of them have lost their homes and should really be living on the streets, but the prostitute has taken them in. A lot of people on the road where we work, they say they call our friends, but they're not really our friends. Friends is this what you find here in the room, the four of us. They say like that must happen when the four of us are there too. We protect each other, man. I can be a girl, I can be a boy, I can be whatever. But had I seen it happen to her, I will come stand out like muscle on, like I will literally attack the guy or whatever. And yet, sometimes a mere moment is all it takes and then it's too late to help. A man raped Nikita's friend, Dihan, right in the middle of the street. I did it day by in my mind a lot. Um, I won't tell them really how, how it hurts. Um, even speaking about it, it feels embarrassed in a way, but what I feel inside, you know, it's like this guy took something from me. And it's something that I can't just go find and replace it. He, he made a gap. Since then, Dihan hasn't felt safe enough to hustle for clients anymore. She's lost her source of income. All that she has left is slowly but surely disappearing. Nikita is helping her to make ends meet and is working even harder selling her body. Just like her friends, Roveda and Tamron. Just like every other day, late afternoon means it's time to get ready for their prospective johns. I put tackies on, they put aisles on, slippers, whatever, and we're off on our way to work. Good work. Vasco Street. What do you call? What do we call? Vasco. Good. Our playground. Our playground. West Coast, a road not far from the coast, home to expensive vacation homes, gorgeous lagoons, and exclusive golf courses. While the prostitutes are preparing themselves for their day's trading, business is already booming in the no-go zone of Ghost Town. Dozens of junkies, middlemen, and dealers stream towards the ugly American headquarters. The center for trading, the garage next door. Inside, killing machine Anis and knife master Boozy oversee the drugs trade and look after the takings. We can tell if it's a busy day, we can make almost 100,000 a in a day. 6,000 euros. To keep the risk of an attack as low as possible, the ugly Americans pursue a specific set of tactics. This is the White House, this is the headquarters. So the small amounts we got on the grounds, the grounds of America is was huge. Now there is houses there. The small, the small one Secret temporary storage areas, regular replenishments, never keeping too many drugs in one place, and above all, reliable suppliers. The boss Dimes deals with them personally. The biggest deals in the underworld are made by people who have come to South Africa for precisely this reason. The Italian Mafia, the Russian Mafia, the Yakuza, you'll find them all here in Cape Town. Nigerians, Pakistanis, 
mafia from the Congo and Somalia. Somalian mafias. In Ghost Town, a gram of crystal costs the junkies 18 euros, just enough for a single hit if you're heavily addicted. It's a tough business. You must be very <clears throat> alert in this game because why your life is also important so you must defend whatever you have because why there's a lot of drug dealers on the street, in houses, in hotels, everywhere. A drugs war that is not only ravaging ghost town, but the entire area of Cape Flats. A war in which addicts are prepared to kill for every hit. The anti-gang unit is back on the hunt. An informant thinks that the American wanted for murder has gone into hiding here. Straight through, straight through, straight through. While Captain Gyafta reassures the first residents, Her team turns over the entire apartment. Uh, and you are now in the same room. Okay, there's another one here. I need more people in here. The police officers catch two suspects and take them to pieces. But the gang will return. The gang will return. Captain Giafta starts by looking for gang-affiliated tattoos and finds nothing. At this precise moment, no one can be sure if one of the suspects is the killer. And the chance of them getting away, in one way or another, is pretty high. The South African police are constantly accused of being corrupt. Even the newly established anti-gang unit has to defend itself against such allegations. We are extremely proud. This unit is the first of its kind in the Western Cape, and it's an honor for all of us to be have, to have would have been chosen to be here. Um, it's a first for the South African Police Services, so there is a huge responsibility on us. They have one more target left. The next one is located right in the heart of American territory. While the special unit continues with its hunt for the murderer, prostitutes Nikita and her friends are ready to hit the streets just a few blocks away. Prayer for the night is I got my PDS, but that does not stop me. I got a sponge. Are you crazy, man? You tampons. I got a sponge that works, it absorbs the blood and doesn't come back. It's all part and parcel of their daily business. Nikita needs the money for her friends, to feed her son, and for her next hit. When I reach my target, I don't come home until I reach my target. Yeah. Usually I reach my target over and over. Time to head to a location that promises a new source of income, West Coast Road. 20 to 60 euros, depending on the service. If he pays well enough, a single John means the chance to continue living this way for another 24 hours, at least. However, as the number of addicts rises, so too does the number of prostitutes. The market is crowded, and her young competitors are willing to do anything their customers want for decreasingly small amounts of money. The cheaper you become, the more weak you become on the road and the more weaker the clients become on us girls, they don't charge so little. 
15 minutes later, the first clients arrive. Nikita leaves empty-handed to begin with and has to rely on her minders, Dumbas and Boyki, who are dealing nearby. Almost an hour later, two more jobs for 30 euros each in a life that others deem to be worth less. My middle sister was also like this, doing what I'm doing, okay? And she was bumped over by a car. Her whole body was broken into 144 pieces. That's an eye-opener for me. I fight men, I fight females, and I secure myself. A daily battle, which so far has left Nikita without any earnings. Her biggest fear is that her son will grow up without a home, as is the case for the one and a half million street children in South Africa, almost all of them from impoverished families. Most of the girls end up selling their bodies, while the boys wind up in gangs. All of them addicts, the prostitutes and henchmen of tomorrow. The ugly Americans in the ghost town no-go zone also offer future prospects for the younger generation, and they're expanding. Primarily in the drug trade. Killing machine Anis and knife master Boozy are currently dividing up half a kilo of crystal meth. More drugs, more money, more power. A simple philosophy. One that doesn't even seem to stop when the police arrive. Cops also, they come. Dirty cops. They come, they can buy drugs here by us. They're smoking drugs. Tuck. Heroin. They fucked up, they fucking, the government is fucked up. That's why we got our own government and we don't fight our own government. Yeah, it's we can feed the dirty people, cops and so, with, with drugs, we feed them, Suma. we feed them liquor so we can get our guns. You see, that is where guns come from and so on. Anis loves the high, starting afresh every day. And he has his own special vision for the future of his no-go zone. Expansion. We build our, 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 our arsenal, you know, okay. weapons, what we need, houses on the enemy's grounds. We kill our swipe the enemies. We take the enemy grounds, we buy houses there, the enemy grounds, we make business there, we protect the house there, and so forth. And so that is what we're doing. So our, 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 our grounds are expanding. See, almost the whole Western country is Americans. The killing machine doesn't fear the police, not even the anti-gang unit. If they want to fight gangsterism, they're not going to... In history, it didn't work. Today, in, 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 in future, it's not going to work. You can't wipe the American organization gang ever. You can dream about it. But if you wake up, you will see the Americans are still there. The drugs trade is booming in Ghost Town and far beyond the borders of the no-go zone. His customers will do almost anything to secure their next hit. They sell themselves, either their bodies or their souls, anything they have left. Prostitution is illegal in South Africa. The official red light district was destroyed by the government a long time ago. Nevertheless, Nikita still scrapes through, day in and day out, even though she knows that she can't do it forever. See, I can't really say I have hope, to be honest with you, because I don't, because if I did have hope, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now at the moment, because that's just stupid. If you've got hope, why do this? Go rather work or go get a job or something. Nikita and Ruveda, despite being trained in a career, became addicted to drugs. 
prostitution, the only way they can make enough money on a daily basis. They know that their time is slowly running out, but giving it up is not an option. They simply keep on going. But this is what happens on a daily basis. Some get, some don't, some lose, some win. Things happen. This is our life is on the road, you know, working girl. A little later, Roveda manages to make another 20 euros. It's a little bit sad. Why? Did I do it? No, we didn't do anything. It was all fit when I was a foot. You have blocks here? Okay, well, let him interview you and I'll phone and I'll speak to you. More clients arrive as the night progresses, paying enough money for the day ahead and the next hit. A new shot of life for a few more hours of normality. Last night I had a client, I went out to the client, she wanted to go home. But this morning when I came back, I brought them beers, I brought them pizza, I brought them chocolate, money. We smoked, we did everything just like she wanted it and now we're still together. I don't think they're going to leave. They're my best friends. Drugs, just like the ones sold in Ghost Town, under the leadership of one man. Dimes. His apartment is just a stone's throw from the headquarters. He lives here with his wife and children, a normal life for all intents and purposes, and yet he trusts no one at all, which is why he always has an eye on what's going on around him. They come in. Nobody enters ghost town without us seeing them. Not a single person. We catch all of them. It doesn't matter if it's daytime, afternoon, or during the night. No one can escape our cameras. Headquarters. Street. House. Entrance and cars. Dimes watches over it all, personally, 24-7. Look at this. These are my two cars. I watch over them, day and night. No one can mess around with them or plant a bomb in them. We watch them around the clock. As well as his cameras, Dimes has spies placed along all the borders of his patch. Any unfamiliar car, any potential intruder, and they are ready to strike straight away. My guys can stop any car. If the car doesn't stop, we open fire. The same goes for unknown pedestrians. If they start running, a bullet will fly after them. Ghost Town is like a high security zone. And one man plays a key role in it all, Anis. No matter who dares to enter the ugly American's patch, their life is in his hands. Anis' house, the meeting point for the foot soldiers. This is where they plan their next attack on rival gangs, using a whole lot of firepower, all under the command of Dimes. Of course, rival gangs always try to get in here, but they don't stand a chance. This is our country. These days, they're too scared to come in here. We shoot anyone who causes trouble. Cape Flats in Cape Town was completely uninhabited up until the 1950s. But then, the whites passed a law to drive black people out of downtown Cape Town. The result? Slums full of poverty and crime. Today, the area is ruled by drugs, weapons, and junkies, and a craving for more. Anyone who enters this no-go zone also enters into a dangerous game. Then we go, shoot, 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 we kill him, we go to there by him, put another four, five, six, seven through his head, and we take his gun and we go back to our grounds. Sometimes you go into the house, 
we go kill five of them, we take three, four guns, we get on them there, and then we come back. An army of strung out killers, for whom every job, regardless of whether it involves money, drugs, or even human life, seems to be just part of one big game. To kill someone uh, is, 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 is like, is like, uh, woof, it's like a bag. I don't feel it anymore. I don't think about it anymore. Yeah, because it's normal for me to go kill someone and to go come back. Because we are programmed for that. While Anas and his followers are preparing for the next attack, the anti-gang unit is still searching for the murderer, an American. However, the snitcher's information is contradictory. There are three possible hideouts. When we arrive there, it's fast action. We need to do all three places at the same time, especially the premises that is on the top, because those people have the vantage point that they see us coming. So if there's anything illegal in the house, they would be able to go and hide it or, or discard of it before we get onto the third floor of the premises. Go, 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 go. Maximum strength. Fully armed. Air reconnaissance. There is no way the American can escape. At first, the mission seems to be a dud. But then... Are you Miley? Chamali? Miley, Rupali or Miley? This Miley? Come, I'm for you. He's coming, what to be profile? Mr. American. Ah. What's that? The tattoo is evidence. He is definitely an American. And it doesn't take long for the suspect to confess. He claims to have been present during the brutal killing, but only as an accomplice. Captain Arcia Kiafta's search still isn't over. The most important thing in all of this is to stop the perpetrator from committing an offence again. So it's not about making the arrest, but about getting the guy off the road so that he doesn't commit the same offence again. So although we found, we found one of the accomplices, we still don't have the actual shooter and we don't have the firearm. But this is the start. So from here, we'd be able to work with him, interrogate him, look who else has been arrested with him and identify other suspects from this. Winding up in prison in Cape Town, involves much more than just serving your sentence. Most criminals end up in Pullsmore Prison, one of the toughest prisons in the world, a prison at war, and one which is controlled by the numbers gang. Anyone who winds up here has to contend with a whole new set of rules. The gangs of the outside world don't exist inside Pullsmore. Here, there is only the 26th, 27 and 28. Gang leaders tattoo the numbers onto their new members, branding them. Failure to follow their rules results in death. Even behind bars, it seems that police have no power. The boss of Ghost Town, Dimes, has managed to avoid prison so far and keeps the no-go zone under his control. Even former prisoners have nothing to fear, providing they swear their allegiance to him. Now, um, 
Every year, more and more members of my gang wind up in prison. The numbers gang is growing bigger and bigger inside the prison walls. We mostly have members of the 26th and 27th gang. Everyone says I'm a winner. They call me the chosen one. I've never been to prison once in all these years, and it's been 37 years now. Dimes will continue to defend his no-go zone to the last, in a never-ending battle. And the anti-gang unit will keep on trying to crack Ghost Town. It is traumatic for anybody just arriving on a scene alone where someone is shot. You know, by all means, it's a gangster lying there, but it is someone's child, someone's father, someone's brother. It's a human being lying there, a human being that is protected under the Constitution. All that's left is the hope that the children will find a new way through life. Their parents hope that they'll live the dream that they never had for themselves. Something that you're doing now, Mommy, is what you're teaching me not to do when I'm older. To start a life with Mommy, yes, I'm sorry. I want to become an IT specialist. I want to become something. I want to be famous. I don't want to become what Mommy is, a street child. <laughs> so I don't believe he'll take drugs when he's older, no. It's my life, my life that's my everything. All this is a future that killing machine, Anas, has long since forgotten about for himself. Ghost Town will always be his whole life, right through to the yeah, death. Americans, they do what they want to and do. They don't die. And fake motherfuckers, they do what they are told to do. Just like Knife Master Boozy, he's even been known to get rid of gang affiliates to protect the future of the no-go zone, Ghost Town. I am the only one who can take one of our members out, and that is. All of which is controlled by gang leader Dimes. He will never give up. He'll keep on fighting. His ghost town will continue to thrive. I'm free on my turf. Around me, in front of me, behind me. They're all scared of me. This place only belongs to one group, us, the Americans. And that's precisely the reason why nobody should ever set foot in Ghost Town, one of the toughest places in the world. <laughs>